Voting is an important part of democracy as it provides people an opportunity to voice their opinion and choose what they believe in. There are several different methods of voting in use around the world. The most common voting method uses paper ballots on which voters mark their preferences. Election officials manually count the ballots after the polls closes and in the event of a dispute the votes are recounted. With growth in number of voters and increasing complexity of system, technology brought into use to make the process more efficient. One of the most used alternative to ballot paper is electronics voting machine or EVM. Though the process and mechanism involved in the device vary from country to country, a basic EVM consists of two units, control unit and balloting unit joined by a cable. Voters presses the button on the balloting unit to choose the preferred candidate. The control unit controls the ballot units, stores voting counts and displays the results on 7 segment LED displays. The devices have preloaded operating program which can't be altered. Once the voting process is over, the polling officer presses the close button which prevents the EVM from accepting further votes. The balloting unit is then disconnected from the control unit and at the time of counting of votes, the results are displayed by pressing the result button. Sounds like a great idea? But the initial cost involved in manufacturing and distributing, the units are quite high and training the staffs in charge and voters is significantly challenging. So does it actually make sense to replace the paper ballots with electronic machines? Let's check the facts. One of the obvious benefit is saving of stationery, which not only cuts cost but also have positive impact on environment. It is estimated that in a populous country like India, 11,000 metric tons of paper was used every time there was an election in the country, which is saved by replacing ballot with EVMs. Though the machine cost higher, it was more than neutralized by the savings in the matter of production and printing of ballot papers, transportation, storage and also reduction in the counting staff and the remuneration involved. The voting process can be much faster. Irrespective of number of voters, the result can be declared within a couple of hours as compared to 20 to 30 hours on an average under the ballot paper system. Also, it can be recounted easily whenever required. Invalid votes, which is a big challenge in ballot markings, can be reduced significantly as there are much less incidence of invalid votes, that is less than 0.0% in case of EVMs. With all the remarkable advantages, it's obvious to say the system is a fabulous alternative and it should replace the outdated paper system everywhere. However, no technology is 100% foolproof and the electronic machine is also surrounded with many controversies questioning its security efficiency. Where some countries are using it successfully and some are in the process of piloting their machines, there are a few of them who discontinued the machine over security risks. So, can the machine be hacked and the stored results be altered? Hacking would require an EVM to be connected to internet, but EVMs have no internet connection, so communicating to EVM is not possible from an external device. But several resources have demonstrated successful ways to tamper with the device. One of the most common ideas is to insert a small chip with a Bluetooth connection which controls the display unit. The panel can be controlled with a mobile device which will override the result in machine's memory. However, it may not seem possible that such chips can be inserted in lakhs of voting machines. Also, this kind of tampering will have to involve hundreds of people at different stages including various center and state officials, which makes it difficult to keep the tampering secret. Moreover, the ballot paper system is not free from security threats either and has seen worse form of tampering, bogus votes and booth capturing. As we know, system is comprised of technology, process and pupil. If we are required to test the robustness of the system, all the three needs to be looked upon. So, to improve a system, it's required to check the robustness of process and people involved as well. What according to you is the most effective method of voting? Suggest your views in the comment section, subscribe our channel and click on the bell button for more exciting videos.